Hello, everyone, and thanks to those who connected on Zoom or Facebook to follow with us this talk from Katerina Radchenko, uh, director of the Odessa Photo Days. Thanks for all of you to be there. And uh, I'm Karin Dolek, and we open this canal to know more about Ukrainian culture and what we can do to interact and help and know more, of course, and broadcast uh, with the German Photography Academy and Nine Lives. And thanks to Boris and Erika who helped me do this from the beginning. So please, Katerina, we're going to learn more today about contemporary photography in Ukraine. Yeah, thank you, Karin. Thank you, everybody, that like you're here. And uh, so, as usual, hello, everybody. I'm Katrin, and I'm from Ukraine. And like today, uh, I will talk a little bit about Ukrainian photography. It will be super briefly. So, of course, like after this, I will welcome you to make your own research. And uh, but I hope that like I will try to kind of make it clear how the Ukrainian photography developed and like how it's now and what's going on with Ukrainian photography. So I'll switch my, uh, to my presentation. So here we are. Uh, like actually, like uh, the idea was to talk exactly about the contemporary Ukrainian photography, but like I understood that like to talk about the contemporary, it's important to understand how the history developed, and actually like why Ukrainian photography still it's not so visible in the international level. And for this, like uh, like my proposal is jump a little bit to the history and like to understand actually uh, how it was developed during like the different century, just briefly to see this uh, different time in different um, periods of time. So uh, first of all, like this is like Ukraine, like the territory of Ukraine and uh, Ukraine is super small compared with Russia. And uh, from actually uh, 1918, like it's Ukraine was all the, like long time on the shadow of Russia. Like first it was Soviet time. And then from 1991, it was uh, like the 30 years of developing the identity of Ukraine. But also like I would like to mention that the war which we have right now with Russia it's like uh, it's a long war it started like long time ago uh, but also like it was not only like physical battle but also like it was a kind of uh, fight in the different levels and as well on the cultural level as well as the photography level because like first of all like when uh, Soviet appears as like Soviet Union appears of course like the identity as Ukrainian photography or Ukrainian artist just didn't exist. It was a Soviet photography, it was a Soviet artist. Doesn't matter where you've been born, doesn't matter where you are from, doesn't matter what you're doing. It was like important like to create this myth of the uh, powerful country, of the powerful union with new identity. And of course, this identity was uh, controlled by the uh, different institutions and it was controlled like what kind of messages you bring through the photography. And uh, uh, talking about the history, like uh, when we are like uh, photography appears on the territory of Ukraine, it was like in the 19th century and it was more or less like the same scenario in like in other countries. So like the international photographers from France and German arrived to Ukraine for as uh, like engineers or photographers who decided to open their photo studios. And like step by step, this like new technology became available for them. Ukrainians, they started to open their studios. So it was like, I could say the classical way of developing like the studios, like the uh, small photos, like uh, for the carte. And like, and this like developing of this uh, way of um, like new medium photography. But uh, it's uh, became a huge changes uh, from, uh, from after the revolution, because like photography became uh, not only like the uh, kind of way of keep the memories, not only the way of the showing the beauty, or to show the uh, historical events, but also it became the method of making the propaganda. And from one side, uh, during the Soviet Union, photography was used a lot for the propaganda, for the creating uh, of uh, right messages. But like from another side, it was created and used as a tool to kill and actually 
people. Uh, like here you can see the small piece of one photo, like this creature's face. And in 30s, when we had uh, a huge, like, um, like a lot of people were like struggling in the uh, prison and also like there was a lot of people who were like arrested and also a lot of people who were killed who had like the different different political views on the situation or were like the strong pro-Ukrainian position so like these people were immediately like arrested killed and just like um, completely like disappeared and the things that like if for example your family on someone like had in your family album the photos of these political prisoners then it's Mean that you could be next and your family could be next the photos it was enough as evidence to kill people and this was a kind of strong fan and first of all it brings to that that people started to destroy their family albums they uh, destroyed and scratched the faces or they cut the faces from the photos and it was like the first way like the first step of this fair fair in like that photography could be the uh actually the instrument of killings and instrument of like to put you in the prison uh then like uh, continue with this like with the soviet time of course like it was like a huge censorship it was important like how the people using the cameras what they're shooting what they're showing it was a huge like list of the rules what you can shoot and how you can shoot so from one side like it was like a uh, uh, way of uh, develop the nice classical documentary photography but from another side of course it, like it was controlled what exactly you're showing through the photos and for example during the second world war uh, like uh, if you're like searching for the in the archives it's really difficult to find the photos from the uh, soviet soldiers uh, because only like few uh, so few uh, photographers, uh, limited photographers, they had accreditation and there was a photographers who actually know how to work with the propaganda images. And uh, if uh, you're just a simple soldier and you have the camera, of course, like it's, uh, you can be killed immediately because like you can like show the truth. And that's why it's much more easy and like uh, to find the photos from the German or Austrian soldiers, uh, officers, than from uh, any Soviet like soldiers. It's, it was actually also another fear, like the fear that like you can uh, show the truth and you can be killed by this truth. And then the, like not long time ago, eight years ago, like in 2014, when the war starts in Ukraine, actually the museums in Donbass and Lugansk, they were occupied and completely destroyed. But the important uh, paintings, important piece of art were moved to Russia and photos and uh, documents were destroyed. And again, like it's much more easy to create the new identity, the new fairy tale when there's no evidence. And it was used like already this uh, strategy by Russia, uh, like when they started to talk about the Donbass, it's uh, Russian part. Like it was used exactly in this way because actually historically when we check the documents we still can find limited numbers but there exist limited numbers of the photos which shows that the, before the Soviet time this this part it was a completely like Ukrainian people lives there because there was a national dress and it was like it's this evidence that <laughs> actually stayed in the territory and uh, but the same as like this evidence like the soviets tried to destroy then it's much more easy to manipulate much more easy to create the new fairy tales and the new stories so this is like the kind of briefly about like a few important steps and uh, by these steps i would like to show that like first of all it was like really difficult like to talk about ukrainian photography like we can we started to do it only only from the 1991 when we got the independence and it was like possibility to build and to back to our identity from another side of course like the um, this um, instruments of the sharing the information is much more powerful was like in the russia side because like the soviet time it was the 
a long time when they had this instruments of the present uh, Soviet <laughs> Russian photographers. And actually, like, uh, and another uh, thing that, like, also all these events that they brought their fair, fair because of the keeping photos, fair uh, to research photos, fair, like, to really to work with the history. And all these things together, it actually, like, brings us, like, to the moment that, like, uh, Ukrainian photography. Uh, step by step now it appears on the international uh, professional community but it's really like uh, still not visible and that's why it's so important like to show it and to show Ukrainian photography and to show exactly what's going on so from the 90s like uh, uh, actually before the 90s I would like also to mention that like the uh, revolution of the Soviet photography actually uh, was in Kharkiv in Ukrainian city, which now is brutally bombed by the Russian soldiers. And uh, it starts in the 70s, 70s and 80s. Uh, the group of Ukrainian photographers, they decided to make the culture revolution. And there was the step like to do something different and to show the real stories from Kharkiv uh, using the media as photography. Like one of them is Boris Mikhailov, whom you probably all know, like the famous Ukrainian artist. Like uh, the, he actually, this, he started like to work with this M images and he started like to show uh, the real life and criticized that uh, system, uh, the Soviet system, and like to not follow this uh, strong rules how the photos should be made and not making the propaganda. Of course, because of his works, like he uh, had uh, first he uh, um, lost his job, but also he had to leave Ukraine and to move uh, abroad to Germany. But uh, actually, like. Uh, uh, as the photographers, like this group of photographers in Kharkiv, they tried like to show the reality, but also they tried to show the new ways of was working with photography. They started to paint it. They started like to make the collages. They started like to use different angles of the shootings, like from the land, from behind. Uh, but also they started to shoot naked body. And it's really important because in Soviet time it was not possible to uh, shoot like to make a photos of the naked body. It was like it was strong censorship and it was not possible to show it. So uh, also like uh, the, for example, the artists Viktor and Sergei Kochetov, this is like uh, son and father. So they also like they did this panoramic uh, photos of the different districts of Kharkiv and over paint, like painted them, uh, brought like uh, more powerful, uh, a little bit absurd colors uh, to this gray reality. And uh, then uh, Alexander Suprun, uh, he did uh, uh, collages, incredible <coughs> collages, uh, but also like to show a little bit like absurd of the of the situation, absurd of the living in in the uh, in Kharkiv and in the Soviet time. It's like uh, because like uh, if you know like in Soviet, it was important to show how strong is economy, uh, how strong is the people. So like he used this method from one side, but also like he like make the absurdic uh, connotation and absurd images about. And uh, another artist is Roman Petkovka. Uh, actually, like he work a lot, like uh, work a lot with uh, naked bodies, and uh, he uh, like in this series it uh, calls him like he's making the parallel between the female bodies and the uh, technical schemes, like how to make like some uh, some technical instruments or whatever. And uh, but it was like now when we are watching on all these photos, like it looks like it's uh, nothing is. Uh, special is simple from one side but from another side it's so important to understand that there was 70s 80s and 90s so it was the time especially in 70s and 80s where it was easily to be arrested easily to lose your job and that it was important uh, easily to lose your country because you are doing not the right images and it was like this super like uh, controlled by the censorship like by the, this like uh, all these institutions and it was a risk to do it so like uh, a lot of uh, photographers from Kharkiv and I know that like uh, it will be like it's like, like this topic it should be completely like the full lecture but like they did this revolution and the first they actually like uh, went against of the system and and it was like, of course, it was a huge wave and inspiration for the other artists. So um, 
Uh, yeah, one more artist like uh, Pavlo Fievgen, who is also like uh, shows like for example here is like three naked uh, bodies of the men, but also like it was uh, doesn't matter whom you shoot like it was female or it man it's naked and it's already forbidden. Uh, and uh, in the uh, 90s, of course, the situation changed because like Ukraine got the independence. And uh, from one side, like it was uh, the moment when it was possible like to create uh, more or less whatever. But from another side, of course, like it was like the, the problem that like the, a lot of artists didn't have the knowledge and uh, uh, but like the borders already were open and it was the open borders for the getting information and for the getting the new sources to work and in this moment when actually we just like got the independence like there a lot of artists uh, mostly it was the painters uh, who decided to use photography in a different way more like making the experiments and really like uh, to improvise like to try to use different medias to try to see on the photography from the different angle and this moment it was interesting because like actually a lot of artists they switch to the media art they, they switch to the video photography performance all this medias it was like new uh, for Ukraine and uh, so it was like the way of also like uh, to try something new and for example like uh, artist Vasil Tsagolov uh, he is uh, based in Kiev right now and uh, he like uh, did this uh, physical collages because like you can see for example this pieces of red this is like the meat pieces of meat which he put in the aquarium and like he created this uh, small story inside of his aquarium and it was interesting because it's a reflection on that movies which started like uh, appears like in uh, Ukraine because of this like before the 90s of course like we had like limited information and limited possibility to see like different movies on different art things. Uh, this like another his uh, work which he made in 1996 is uh, soft horrors and actually it has a reflection to the story that like in 90s in Ukraine we had like the a lot of people became super poor but in the same time a lot of like some people became super rich who like actually uh, had the chance to be on the right place or like to sell something or like uh, in the right moment and uh, and this. Really Rich people, they uh, started like uh, for them it was important to show their money. And uh, one of the symbol of their showing money it was the golden crust when they what they uh, always like having here. But like it's not about that there was religion people. It was about to show that they are rich and to show by this a big. Uh, uh, chain and the big cross that they have here was golden but and it was a story that like once like one of these guys wanted to buy this cross and he asked can I have this the biggest one with this gymnasium guy uh, with this sportsman guy and uh, he even didn't know like uh, who is on this cross so like uh, Vasil Tsagol decided to make the reflection and to reflect on this story and to make the photo in it. Another artist like Arsen Savadov as well he's um, uh, now working mostly with as a painter like his uh, artist but like he in 90s uh, he uh, used a lot of media photography and uh, here we can see his uh, series of work which called Don Bas Chocolate and actually it, this is you, you can see this um, uh, dress of the ballet dancer but of, of course like this is um, quotation of this one lake and this uh, reflection is has the connection because in 90s when we got the independence when the putsch was in russia uh, actually like that it was 24 hours on the tv it was on this one lake so it was like the moment and the symbol of the changes so he reflected on these changes and he's showing this but also he's showing this in a different way in the, a little bit brutal way and he's using the workers miners in donbass and uh, another his series like it's fashion at the graveyard uh, like the same it was made in the, by the end of 90s and this is like the time when uh, how I mentioned we got the access to the movies and to the magazines it was difficult like to it was not so easy to buy it everywhere but like uh, we had the black markets and of course like there was access to this fashion magazines so again like he's making the parallel to this fashion magazines but he's doing completely different uh, 
like different visual story because he is asking the models to pose, but in front of the uh like uh, the fresh uh, graves or like the fresh like on the like on the uh when this uh i don't know how it's called but like when the people staying with the with their re death relatives and and actually also you can see that like there's like the small text down and this on this text he's writing the how much this dress cost so it was again like a reflection on the new things which appears and uh, but in the same time, like the, a lot of artists, they moved and they to the photography uh, in nineties. But in the same time, it was key. For example, always was the capital of the documentary photography, the classic documentary photography. And uh, uh, and again, like the artists, like they uh, continue to make their stories, but the topic were changed. If before uh, the nineties, it was important to show the good life, the um, like the strong people, the power of the Soviet Union. So in 90s, it was possible to show the truth. And actually, uh, Alexander Gladielov, it's like one of the documentary, uh, main documentary photographer from Ukraine, from Kyiv. And he did, for example, like the series about home, um, homeless people, like homeless kids. And also it was a phenomenon for, for the 90s because a lot of kids appears on the streets and it and he uh, did the series to show this their stories, to show their lives. Uh, so like, um, talking about like this uh, main centers, like if you can say that like Kharkiv, it was like the um, place of this uh, new wave to create the new photography and the revolution place, uh, Kyiv, it was uh, like kind of center for the reportage and documentary photography. And also because it was like the center of the events and it was, uh, and it still is. And because of course, like it was ref like give the reflection to the artist. And uh, in the 2000s, uh, it was already like different switch because like the new generation of photographers comes. And how I mentioned uh, last time, like in Ukraine, it's really difficult like to get the education as a photographer. And uh, so like you can only search on the online or like luckily travel nowadays, but like it's not possible like really like to develop your skills uh, in the university or like to make the researches like it was together with uh, tutor or whatever. So uh, Ukrainian young generation photographers, they're working mostly with the three topics. Like the first one is body. The second is, is reflect, like it's social political reflection. And the third is a reflection on the surrounding, like the visual, uh, like this connection to the visual um, surrounding around us. And uh, I will show you just a few artists as uh, we don't have too much time, but like this is give you some kind of understanding. Uh, so like the first one is Sasha Kurmas. Uh, it's the artist who is based in Kyiv. And actually he is working with the different medias, but like uh, he's, uh, like, but a lot he's working with the photography and in his series Wasted Yours actually he is showing like his daily life and uh, the things like how I mentioned in Kharkiv it was like a moment when the photographers started like to um, focus on the naked body but the same it was in uh, 2000s because like still the topic of the body of the sex sex sexuality it was so forbidden so long time forbidden that it still need to be uh, researched it's still need to be reflected on it and also like uh, ukraine uh, luckily is not like so um uh, religion country but still is like there's a lot of movement of the religion so it's also like still some small censorship exists like in certain places but of course like generally it's not but uh, but still for the young generation it's important like to make their own research and to understand this uh, sexuality and body and quite often they're using photography as a way to use it because like still like young generation their kids of the generation who was raised in the Soviet. So this is like still everything is connected. So the Sasha's works like is uh, he's showing the uh, city around like the places where he's living and but also this uh, everyday life of the youth in uh, in Kyiv and in Ukraine. And um, 
uh, another artist, Vyacheslav Polipov, how I mentioned like this, like different direction is reflection on your surrounding. If you've been in Ukraine, probably you uh, saw that Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian cities, it's eclectic, visually eclectic. Like we can uh, mix of the Soviet uh, symbols of the uh, like uh, symbols and architecture from the 19th or 18th century, but in the same we have a lot of symbols of the contemporary life and all the symbols comes together. And uh, but this is eclectic. It's beautiful. It's different, but it's beautiful. So Vyacheslav Polikov is uh, collecting these uh, different symbols, uh, which is like on the streets, on the different cities and showings in his series. And sometimes it's even like difficult to understand that, that it comes together and like it exists in the reality. And as our streets and our cities are so eclectic, it's of course it gives like good perspective and good like platform to work for the artist. And also that's why we like like uh, last years we had so many international artists. And uh, another like uh, artist who is working the same way, it's Yulia Chervinska, so the same, she's like just uh, uh, shooting the uh, signs on the street, like uh, everything what is like already was made by someone or like by regular people and it's, she's collecting these symbols. And by the end, I would like to show the few photos of Igor Efimov. Uh, uh, he is based in the central part of Ukraine and actually it's uh, also like uh, it's a reflection of what is around us and it's not only about the uh, science and the uh, material things, but also about the people and this uh, eclectic in the daily life uh, and, uh, and the kind of fi funny moments which is uh, captured uh, by uh, every day. So this is like, um, uh, yeah, I uh, manage my 30 minutes. Uh, this is like super shortly information about the Ukrainian developing of Ukrainian photography. And of course, like to talk about the, how it's developing the uh, contemporary photography, it's like uh, needs much more time. So I collected like few sources where if you'll be interested, you can see the different series. Like it's like we have only two mag online magazines in Ukraine who is like actually publishing Ukrainian artists. So one is Untitled in UA and second is Bird and Flight Com. And uh, and also like you can follow uh, our festival, the Photo Days Org, uh, from next year probably when we'll back to our work. But still, like this is like the sources where you can find like uh, more publications and portfolios of Ukrainian artists. And uh, I would like like by the end to say that like it's really like important like to. Uh, if to work with the Ukrainian photography, it's like to understand the background and to understand this. Uh, the story behind because like it's not only the re daily reflection and it's not following or copying the um, the visual languages which is like popular now it's like most of the series they have really strong connection to the what's going on in Ukraine and really strong connection to this visual language we, which are in our cities but as well it has a strong connection to the history the history of uh, Soviet time when it was photography was like really in this um, as a propaganda and it was controlled by the institutions and all these fears all these fears brings like a different understanding of this media in Ukraine and um, yeah, so like I'm stopped to sharing my screen and, um, and maybe I'll, I missed something in my super short presentation and you can ask the questions. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I'm just going to ask one question. You didn't miss anything. It was a really good presentation and I think it's more clear for all of us. But I'm very curious about uh, the backgrounds of the photographer of the 2000 and 2010 and before because they were using a lot of painting. And does it mean that they were um, graduated from some fine art school? Do you, have, do you need it to be graduated for, from a fine art school or to be an artist, to be a photographer? Or the photographer were more autodidact and self-made? No, most most of most of the examples. This is like uh, that doesn't have the art graduated. Uh, no, like it's like it's uh, just self-made artist. I would say. 
Wow, but then the, um, it must have been a very, very expensive uh, art at that time. Yeah, but in that time, it also was like the things that, uh, like, for example, like Boris Mikhailov, he's an engineer. And uh, so he doesn't have any connection to the art. And uh, but also like it's important that photography, it was um, really popular in the Soviet time because it was kind of uh, one of the ways uh, to uh, when you have to be busy in your photo club. Uh, and even like the Mikhailov, he created the, uh, his club and he called it Time. And it was uh, connected to the history because for the Soviet regime, it was important that people didn't have the free time. As soon as you have free time, you started to think about your life. So because of this, they created this like the system that like you have to go to the factory until you work from early morning back uh, like at home. But then you have to go to this uh, community club, to the club of the photography or iron modeling or reading, whatever, that you have to all the time to be with someone, with a group of people by the control of these people, like each other, and like really to be busy. So like the photography was popular in the um, in Ukraine and the, all the Soviet territory. And uh, I also used to work with a few artists who is like uh, work, not artists, it's like uh, people who use the photography and work in the villages uh, with, they never had any education on this, but the quality of the photos and the way how they uh, work uh, by the printings and the collages, it's amazing. And uh, that's of course was because like of the influences uh, from the Soviet books uh, from one side, but also like it's kind of, uh, I think it's just talented people from one, from another side. Uh, but yeah, talking about the prices, like that time, it was almost like nobody, like in the 90s, nobody knows about Ukrainian photography. Like it's like, it was, it was a really long time to bring the attention to the Ukrainian photography and really like to bring the, the good prices, the reasonable prices for this work. And it's still going on. Like it's still like, there's not so many Ukrainian artists on the international market. I have a lot of questions, but maybe somebody else has. Does anybody else want to ask some questions right now? No, one question I would like to, you understand? Uh, one question, um, you mentioned uh, Mikhailov. Yes, he's very well known. Um, and um, I, I miss a little bit Sergei Bratkov. What do you think about him? Well, he was like, uh, ex like work mostly was a performance art and like this uh, stenography photography, like in the nineties, like on the end, uh, beginning of 2000. Uh, like end of the 90s, beginning of 2000s, but now he's uh, actually moved to to oh, Russia, oh. and now he's yeah. teaching in Russia in the Rochenko School. And the uh, the the last his project I didn't saw, uh, but like the quite new one, it was like now like uh, Moskva Shapito, if I like if I'm right, like it was like good also like good reflection and criticizing the uh, the situation in Russia. Yeah, like he's like he's presenting like he's uh, sometimes presented in, in Ukrainian art scene as well. But actually, I, I would like to say that like in my presentation, I miss a lot of artists from from Kharkiv. And I also wanted to um, to ask you something we talked about right before the the talk that we need to talk about how to uh, how. Today's photographers don't have their archives with us, with them, and how to interact with them right now because it's contemporary, but it's also today. Yeah, yeah. Like thanks that you remind me. Uh, actually, yeah, the story right now it's like a little bit complicated how to work and to support the Ukrainian artists because like uh, it's already I know a lot of artists had to move from their apartments uh, to the safe places and they didn't uh, had the time and chance to take the archives. Like I know that, for example, Roman Petkovka, he moved from Kharkiv, uh, but like he left his archive, uh, original works there. So it's uh, really like the, the, the problem that like now it's a lot of archives like left in the houses and there's no, 
no trust and no belief that like the houses will stay in the same conditions by the time when we'll be back. And uh, so this is one problem that like, uh, of course, like some artists like had the chance to brought their hard drives like uh, with them, but again, not everybody. And uh, another problem that like, uh, like for example, like now still a lot of artists staying in the, um, like in the zones where there's no, no internet or where it's like this uh, air alarm is every hour and it's not possible actually to share their files. Uh, so like uh, right now it was already like a lot of uh, institutions asked and wanted like to have the contact with the, with the artists, Ukrainian artists to show their works and like to, or to have any comments. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, but it's really complicated because like uh, how I mentioned, like not everybody has access and possibility like to talk, but also like not everybody has access to the files. So uh, in, in this, uh, that's uh, why actually like I uh, decided like our like uh, festival and our team of Odessa for today's, we decided like, first of all, like that we are collecting the photos from, from the wall line. So every day, like we are collecting from the like uh, 10, 15 artists, like the um, rough photos rough materials which we are actually trying like then to spread and to share with the different um, the magazines and this is important to show what's going on on the wall line and to all the cities from one side but from another side to support these artists because like most of them they're not working for the, any agencies so this is kind of volunteering and reflection and uh, from another side, we are also like trying like to provide uh, like um, different publications or exhibitions with contemporary artists, but like also like only we are working with the files which we have as a festival from one side, but from another, it's important like uh, also like to collect, like to have a feast for the artists because like a lot of them, like now it's like doesn't have work. So it's also like, it's not the time only to show Ukrainian photography. It's also the time like to like, in the, like to help and uh, them in the way of the some supporting, but also like, uh, like we did like, for example, a few exhibitions uh, nowadays and we try like to collect the donations and then these donations to spread to the artist who needs or to the volunteering service, service which need to be, uh, which needs in Ukraine. Thanks, maybe some questions about that. Mm -hmm. and Ingo and Ingo and Tina. Yes, there was a comment by Tina. Maybe Tina, you would like to talk. Please, Tina, talk. <laughs> well, if not, I can just read it. She says, "Okay, uh, okay, okay. Here I am. Hi, hi. Can you hear me now?" Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Katerina, I'm very happy to see your presentation because also, even if I know some Ukrainian photographers, many of them I didn't know. I only know more the, the older generation. And I hope we can, we can continue to work together in some way and find other possibilities to um, to support the photographers um, in whatever they, they need, like uh, solving problems with the archives or trying to find uh, presentation possibilities and so on, and support in money and whatever. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tina. And, and that's, that's a question I wanted to ask also. What is the practical way to help for the archive, for example? It's a good question. And unfortunately, I can't really answer now because like today I had a conversation with one artist who is based in Kharkiv and it's not possible like now to go there and to take this archive from there because it's super dangerous. And it's even like to some cities, it's not possible to bring the humanitarian help and food. So honestly, like we, uh, it's an open question. Like, I don't know, like right now we are searching for the ways, like we are searching on the different possibilities, like how, first of all, like to save the archives from the cities who, which are bombed right now. 
because like also like this is a crucial problem not only for the private archives but on also for the museums and also as we know from the history like the museums they're always like trying of course like to keep safe uh, the uh, paintings or like uh, sculptures but like the photography unfortunately comes to the last position for the savings and this is like the most easy to burn and to most easy to destroy it. So yeah, like uh, I hope that we'll find out this uh, and we'll understand, uh, but I can't say now. Like we are, we are the same. We are just thinking, searching, and but I don't know. Um, uh, Nadia from the Kharkiv Museum told me that they managed to make it all escape through a, through a van, and that's already a good news. Uh, does anybody has other questions? Because for me, Katharina made, made, made a terrific presentation. Yes, I am sorry, I have a question. Please. Uh, um, uh, my name is Irina Leonenko. I'm a photographer. I study in Brussels. I apologize for my look. I have 15 people at home. I'm, I'm really uh, concerned about Ukrainian women photographers. I uh, raised a small fund and I'm transferring directly money to some uh, girls photographers to help them to evacuate to relocate I really I I want to I want to know what can my university in Brussels and other universities uh, can do for Ukrainian photographers for young photographers like uh, yeah thanks like this uh, like first of all like according to your uh, like uh, question there's institute like organizations which calls female ukrainian photographers they like the group exists in facebook so like now they're trying like to collect the money through the nft art but also like it's possible like to, to, to make direct donation to them it's like one way another way like now we have like the few organizations who is like uh, um, searching money for the Ukrainian artists and for example we are collaborating with one NGO like who is uh, helping to us like to uh, search money for the photographers who is on the front line because like uh, how I mentioned a lot of them now and like not having the stable job and they are volunteering so we would like like to collect some money to help them and like to, to like to kind of share some money for them. Uh, so like you can like write me directly if you want and I can you provide like these different institutions and then you can decide it to which one and all to be like in touch with them or where you would like to transfer money. Uh, thank you very much Katya and, and I was just wondering because this is short term and we will do that for sure but uh, a lot of women are coming to Europe and they don't have jobs I was thinking maybe to connect them to professionals professional associations here to universities here and think think more long term because a lot of them would not be able to go back in the in the yeah well in this case you definitely when you have like the concrete idea you can share with me and we'll publish as a photo festival because like we used to work with a lot of uh, female photographers and we did last year the big presentation of ukrainian female photographers so we are in touch with them and we can share this news then that they can uh, contact you directly and is this maybe a good idea for this group to uh, to to share the ideas and to join forces? Because I know in US they're doing something, uh, uh, in Germany they start doing something. But maybe is there a way to kind of connect, make a group, uh, at least something simple that we can share ideas that we don't replicate our efforts because there is really no time for that, and it's it's good to uh, to share ideas something like this you know well sharing not really work now for us to be honest not for us and for the other artists to be honest because like we are really like focusing on the small things what we are doing and to be honest we are like we are just doing now we are like don't really have time for the sharing but uh, definitely if there's any initiative will be helped to spread the information this is for sure and as well like uh, with this uh, with initiative of this female Ukrainian artists I am I'm sure that they will uh, spread as well and will be open for the discussion so like we can discuss like the concrete ideas but definitely not share thank you thank you um, and Irina, if you have any initiatives or anything towards women phot photographer, uh, we, we, we can share. We are planning to do more things with Erika, uh, which is somewhere here on the timeline. I don't know where. And uh, this is one talk, but there was before, there were the others. 
we we are doing what we can so if you if you have anything my email is somewhere you can contact me easily this is great this is great this is exactly what uh, what i'm looking for yes thank you so much Ka karin okay. anyway you can we can have a chat after no not today not today is not possible but after this week I know. Uh, and we try to set something up okay anybody else because the time is running out and we all, all are a lot of things to do. Irina Nanana, World Quicker, please. No. So maybe it's time to say goodbye. Um, I wanted to remind that uh, there has been a talk before and another one, the third one, uh, with Katerina, which is a terrific speaker. So thank you so much for doing that with us. Is on Thursday at 3 p.m. same time. It's going to be about uh, photography in documentary photography by the Ukrainians. Uh, she's going to show us photographers uh, making pictures today of their own country in of their own war, and presenting their works and help and showing, uh, telling, expressing what we can do, who is doing what, and. Maybe uh, more concrete ways of sharing that work to the people we know uh, who works in the media, who works as publishers and everything, because that's the little things we can do, I think. Um, so thank you so much, all of you. Uh, it's, it's really nice to, to see you all there and being concerned and learning more about Ukrainian contemporary and for <laughs> an everlasting culture and showing them also that they are not that alone that they think. So thank you so much. And for some of you, see you maybe on, th on Thursday. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.